Hey everybody, Mr. Steinecker here. I want to share a quick technique slash suggestion for those who are working on poems. By the way, this has nothing to do with our poetry project, but it is college application week. If you have questions about college, I happen to have been. I happen to know many people who have gone. So uh, let me know, okay? Anyway, so here's the deal. I've been seeing a lot of people working on poems that look kind of like this. So I've been seeing a lot of things that look like this. Instead of having like a bunch of lines like you normally see in a poem, we've just got one giant block of text. And there are students who are telling me, well, I'm not sure what to write for a poem, but I can write a story. And I have a suggestion for you. Take a story and turn it into a poem. If you're like, what? You can't do that. Yes, you can. Um, many of you have probably heard of a book called The Crossover. And this is an award-winning book that tells an entire story, like it is an actual, an actual book, okay? But inside, we notice all of the lines are short lines. And it sounds kind of like a normal book and kind of like a poem at the same time. So if you would like to try that out, it's not too hard to do. Here's an example of a page from the crossover series, right? Look at that second stanza right here, okay? After describing what the word calamity means, he says, as in, if JB hadn't been acting so silly and playing around, he would have cut one lock instead of five from my head and avoided this calamity. I mean, really, it kind of just sounds like normal speaking, but there's a change that happens when you make short lines. When you put only a couple of phrases on a line like that, we pay a little more attention to it than we would if it was buried inside of a big paragraph, right? Also, I've noticed that I tend to pay more attention to the words that are on the ends of lines or sometimes the beginning of lines than I would if it was all just one big paragraph. So I did a rough draft of a poem here and I just wanna show you what this might look like. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'll read the beginning part. Uh, I just came up with this on the fly, so it's kind of a rough draft. Um, and it's fine if you don't like it. Not everybody is going to agree with everything that everyone thinks of or, or like it. But I decided to write a quick rough draft poem about the year 2020. But right now, it's just a giant paragraph. How can I describe what this year has been like without using any curse words? Well, it's certainly been a strange one. The year 2020 came in with fires in Australia and killer hornets that never killed anyone, as far as I'm aware. Then came this ru these rumors. Whoops of some Corona what's it from China that was apparently a pretty big deal, but I figured it would just blow over. Turns out it did blow over, brought over by people on airplanes and trucks and trains who didn't know yet that wearing a face mask was a big deal. I'm kind of proud of that whole blow over thing with the two meanings of blow over. I just came up with that on the fly. Um, but do you see, like, it, it's, I already tried to kind of think of it as a poem when I was writing it, and it's there's some vague poem-ish sounds, but it's just a mess. So here's what we can do. We can try hitting enter after sentences. That's pretty easy to do. We just look for our periods or other, or commas is another thing you can do, right? Hit enter after commas. Um, you can hit enter before words like that, or before or after commas, okay? And you can see how does that change the way the poem looks on the page? How does that change the way you read it? So now, how can I describe what this year has been like without using any curse words? Slight pause where the line changes. Well, it's certainly been a strange one. You know, actually, I want to hit enter here. Yeah, I think I like having strange like that. And actually, I'm even going to change that. See, sometimes when you make the lines shorter, you start to notice things. I just want to do this. Well, it's certainly been strange. Some people like to capitalize the first letter in every line. I'm not going to do that here, okay? You can also start to hit enter and make more like subsections. We call this a stanza, so it's not a paragraph. For some reason, we use another name in poetry. So yeah, I can do that. And maybe like, turns out it would just blow over, and then I hit enter again here. Turns out it did blow over. Yeah, I think I like having a space in between those two, right? So are you noticing how by shortening the lines, suddenly what didn't seem a whole lot like a poem now does? It's not cheating. The whole idea with the poem is that we are just slowing down a bit and paying more attention to the lines and the meanings within the lines. And sometimes we do pack more meaning in. So maybe like I'm going to hit enter here and here. 
and maybe there, maybe there. Yeah, because now Corona What's It from China is on a line by itself. So it's like paying more attention to the, the Corona What's It China, like the alliteration, right? So as you can see, uh, messing around with the lines is kind of fun. Um, you can experiment in multiple ways. It's really easy to do on a computer, right? You can be like, oh, wait, what if I go here instead, right? And just see how does it change how it looks on the page and how does it change that slight pause that happens when you're, you uh, pause for just a second with your eyes as you have to skip down to the beginning of the next line. Uh, so that's a technique that I would like to suggest if you've still been having trouble with poetry or if you like this idea of taking something that's like a story and then turning it into a poem. Or it doesn't have to be a story. This is not really a story. This is more like a, a rant of mine. I already know that this is going to be the last stanza, for example. right? So yeah, I hope that helped. Uh, that's a poetry technique that I suggest you play around with. Changing up where you end and start new lines really changes the way the poem works as far as when it's on the page and you're reading it silently. But it also changes just a tiny little bit the delivery of when you read it aloud. And as you can see, there are a lot of writers that like to do this kind of stuff. So happy poem writing.